morning. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Hello, Ray. And for everybody, this is my friend Ray, um, professor in psychology and uh, retired colonel of the Special Forces. And we at Alpha 8, we are passionate about promoting mental health. And we think it's an area which deserves much more attention. Um, depression is a widespread and a complex mental health condition affecting an estimated one in five adults. Um, and while many people experiencing it, current treatments prove ineffective for a significant portion of those sufferers, right? So, Ray, now there have been new developments, and I want to later on have your uh, take on those things as well. Recent studies challenge us that traditional view of depression as being one single disorder, but suggesting that instead it has different subtypes. So by analyzing the brain activity, say uh, uh, scientists uh, identified, I think, six subtypes. So six distinct patterns of depression, which each respond differently to medication or therapy. <clears throat> So this is a groundbreaking discovery because it offers hope for developing personalized treatment plans for like ultimately improving the outcome of um, so struggling with uh, that bad uh, illness, right? So the study shows that they are subtypes and those different subtypes respond differently to treatments like antidepressants or therapy. Um, this shows that treatments need to be tailored to an individual patient, right? So every individual can have a different subtype. So what we need is, uh, we need to have more precise um, diagnoses. We, we need to understand the different forms of depression and anxiety, and we need to improve those treatments to avoid that trial and error management. Um, so we from Alpha Aid, we want to promote uh, that awareness of mental health and uh, Ray, I want you to tell me your take on things from your perspective as being one of the spearheaders of uh, the warm line in California and being on the warm line for many, many years. We're learning more. Uh, actually, we're learning more about the brain uh, because we have a broader database and a uh, easier to get database. So we not only have all the medical journals, we have all the books that were written about it and everything in the past, but this is something new. And uh, when I would get a depressed person on the line, uh, the first thing I do is try to categorize it in my mind. In other words, are, are what kind of, uh, what kind of depression do they have? Depression is uh, every, every, in everybody's brain, a moment by moment during the day, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Well, if it goes down for a long period of time, that's depression. So, you know, if you get up in the morning and, and you're depressed all day, and the next day you're depressed and you got headaches and, you know, you got, you've got something associated with, with that depression, and it could be stress. It could be those six elements that you're talking about, whatever, whatever it is. So I, when I worked on the warm line, I uh, I would try to, I only had 20 minutes <laughs> to talk with the people. So I had to focus. I don't know what you think, but I think uh, um, depression as part of mental health is uh, uh, something which uh, um, has been given way to less attention in the, in, in, in the last years? Well, my, uh, I was fortunate to uh, be on the warm line uh, for about two years and to uh, listen and observe and participate in any kind of discussion uh, outside of my daily responsibilities. So I got invited to the, um, when they, uh, when they um, wanted to get more money for the warm line. And to be honest, uh, mental health has gotten more attention probably over the last five years than they have gotten in the previous uh, 25 years. There's, because we used to bury any conversation to do with depression, any conversation to do with mental health, 
uh, schizophrenia, whatever. We just put it aside and would not talk about it. We would run away from it. Over the past five years, there's been several movements to bring mental health to the forefront and to talk about mental health. And you see it in the newspaper all the time and you see it advertised all the time, TV and everything else. Uh, I don't know what percentage of the time, but there's a lot more attention given to mental health today than there has been. Why is that? Because of money. So, That's right. So we actually should have warm lines all over that it gets more into the face of people that people are getting a little bit more familiar with mental health issues, I guess. Well, for example, uh, you yourself with Alpha Aid, uh, you had the idea of putting uh, a warm line in Namibia, in uh, Africa. However, it's going to cost a lot of money and a lot of talent and a lot of people to do that. So we'd have to get the uh, proper people to do that. I, I know of one girl down there in Africa that interviewed Alpha Aid. She did a great job and she would be a spearhead, but we'd have to pay her a lot of money. And that that might be a downside initially. Long term, it's a great idea. A warm line in Africa is a wonderful idea. I'm glad you thought of it. Well, that's it for now. Thank you so much for listening and watching the video. Subscribe and see you next time.